Hey guys, I'm back with another episode. Today I will introduce the Hulk Earthquake deck. So in CRL, I think many pro players are using this, so I was thinking, why not? Let me try and see how good we, we do with this. So we're gonna show you a bunch of replays that may seem like pretty hard to deal with. So uh, let me show you guys. We're gonna go through one with the Balloon. So basically you only have Archer's Bomb Tower delivery for that. And um, this one against Sparky, of course. We all hate Sparky. And then the last one um, against Splasher. So they have very good defenses uh, for... The Hawk, they have the Bomb Tower, they have the NATO, they can perfectly deny the Hawk, but we also have the Archers for the Graveyard. So I'll briefly go through these three replays and um, show you about my top process and I hope you guys can pick up a thing or two playing this deck. So I'll see you guys in the first replay. Okay, we're in. Uh, first replay here, we're gonna play against this guy Lotus who is playing, um, as I showed earlier, the Giant Skeleton uh, Balloon deck. So usually with Balloon, um, it's, it's a hard matchup because you have to defend perfectly, okay? If they're playing Balloon Arrows, um, it's usually a GG because that is like... You basically have no more defenses. And once the arrows, your Archers, alright? So we go with the Hulk first play, pretty okay. After the Archers, I have then look at that. So we're just basically figuring out what he has. Over here, I don't have my Knight, so I have to cycle first. We go with the Log Roll. Then we go with the Delivery. Then over here, we'll basically, we thought the Miner would go in the back, so we're defending. He goes with the very aggressive Snowball, so you can see now he's pretty low. I still have a Knight on the field and I'm up in the Elixir. So that is when I, I believe I, I decide to go in with the Hawk. Yeah, in case he has like a Fisherman or something, or NATO, we don't even know what he's playing yet, so we go with that. So um, the Knight tank for a bit, so the Hawk manages to get quite a few swings, and this is uh, gonna put me in a very nice shape right now. So again, uh, we're deciding what to do here. We go with the log, I believe, for tower damage, and that will be good. Okay, we don't exactly know what he's playing yet. We haven't seen the giant skeleton, we just saw the miner, and now he plays the GS. So with GS, we know that, that there might be a balloon deck somewhere, so again, uh, we gotta be extra careful with the building. If you don't have to use the building, don't use it, unless you know his entire deck that you don't have to pull anything. Because if we use the building like against the, the Dark Prince or something else, then the balloon will just come in and that will be GG. So over here we go with this, we have to go delivery early to get some damage on that balloon. And then we go with the archers still as a safety net. The bomb from the bomb tower is always very key, that would usually help to take out the balloon in the last second. Alright, so uh, we managed to clean it up, but we still took that damage, still took the minor hits. And then over here, uh, the thing I decided to go with the hawk. Yeah, we're gonna keep up the pressure because we have two archers there. He goes with the hawk and the he goes with the hunter and the snowball, but the hawk still gets a hit and the archers lock onto the hunter, so that's gonna be a very nice cleanup. And over here, our, our hands are a little awkward, we could we can cycle. So against um, this kind of decks, earthquake is pretty much no, not too much use, so you can just cycle earthquake if you have an awkward cycle. Alright, so he goes with that. Again, we know the balloon is gonna come in, so we have to be ready. We don't know what lane, so we don't want to put everything in the same lane yet. Okay, so once we see the balloon, we'll go with the bomb tower, we'll go with the delivery, everything is the same. Then this time we go with the hog for a little bit of chip. He goes with the very aggressive snowball, you can see now he has exactly nothing for the hog. The bomb comes in clutch there from our, from our bomb tower. Okay, so that was when, that, that is the time that we can try to find to Hawk. When he puts up a big push and he goes all in, he won't have enough elixir for that, uh, to defend the Hawk Rider. So we, we managed to sneak in that Hawk. So again over here, we go with delivery, we go with the bomb tower. This time we go with Archer's High in case he decides to minor them. So we make sure that we get the balloon immediately. And that's within enough quick range. So that's GG. So I hope you guys um, understand how to defend Balloon if they don't have arrows, this is how you do it. If they have arrows, you might have to cycle double set of archers, you might have to do double bomb towers, and it's a different defense. But it's very hard against arrows, most probably you, we, we usually lose those kind of matchups. I'll see you guys in the next replay. Okay, next one against the dreaded Sparky. This time we have Delivery, so it's not too bad. If we were playing Log Snowball, I think that would be a much harder defense. Okay, Sparky got a slight nerf um, after the balance update, the first attack is a little bit slower, so it's not too bad. Okay, so over here I don't really want to play my Knight yet, this might be a bit awkward if, I, if he goes like something else at the other side where I need the ground, so we wait and then the, we deliver the minions. Okay, so over here he cycles the Zap, we cycle the Log, he goes with the Sparky in the back. Okay, so over here I only go with a single hog because I need the knight. I need, I know I need the knight. Whatever he plays, we need the knight. Okay, so now he goes with that. Musketeer. We go with the bomb tower pre-plays. He doesn't go with his E-Giant this time. I'm not sure if it's because he didn't have enough elixir, but that's gonna make it easy for defense here. Okay, if he goes with the E-Giant, uh, as you will see later on, it's gonna be a lot harder, but he didn't go with it. So his cycle is also a little bit awkward. 
So now he goes with it, and then he goes with the rage. So we have to do this. We have to protect um, the archers. Now we go with the lock a little bit late, so we do take some damage from those uh, minions and spears because of the heal up. But again, not too bad, because we're still in the lead and we're about even in elixir. So now we know what he's playing. He's playing the Goblin Giant Sparky Rage deck, so he doesn't have a big spell. The only thing he has is Rage. I was comfortable playing the Hog, even though I know he had a mini pack there because I could defend. And uh, we'll, we'll see how we defend this. We go with the delivery just to be safe. Archers alone might also be able to defend that, but delivery would be safer. He's gonna... we were already anticipating, now we're down by a lot because we... one push, we had to use Hulk and we had to use our delivery. So now he goes only with that though, and then now we just cycle into his lane. He goes with the Zap, that's good for us, this gives us the opportunity to cycle back. So I think the opponent made it. Now he's gonna go in my lane there. He's gonna try to protect that. So I'm gonna go because I know he doesn't have his mini packer at that point. So we're gonna go all in. He might get back his mini packer. We go with the aggressive earthquake also. He goes with the mini packer and the hill spirit. He manages to defend it, but this time we we, not, we we do like massive damage. Okay, again, don't put your bomb tower until you see everything that you need to see. Okay, don't don't think that he will always support. Um, don't think that he will support the Sparky. With the Goblin Giant, he could. This, this is what you should do: support the other way, because the Sparky alone are already gonna require a, a good amount of response. I don't want to go in the same lane as him, so I decided to go opposite here, and now we got a little bit of chip. So now it's almost gonna be overtime. So most probably one tower is gonna be it. I have the luxury of going either left or right here. So he goes with the Sparky in the back. I know he doesn't have Beanie Packer again, so this time we decide to go all in. Over here, you're gonna see that one Larry. That one Larry is the MVP here. He gets one shot, he gets a second shot, he zaps in the last second, but that's already enough quick range. Okay, so the key I would say in this matchup, especially in the double elixir, when he gets off that big push, is be careful of your bomb tower placements. Bomb tower only, only, only for the Goblin Giant. If he goes with the mini packer, try to put it in the same lane because he's using rage, he doesn't have a big spell. So try to put it nearer so the bomb tower attracts both. If not, you're gonna have to play extra skellies and whatnot. And always try your best to protect your bomb tower. Okay, I'll see you guys in the last replay. Okay, so the last one I'm gonna show you guys against Splash Shot. So it might see like it's, um, it's not the best matchup because if um, the Splash Shot player plays well, his bomb tower and his uh, NATO is gonna perfectly deny your Hawk Riders every time once the first king is activated. So here he didn't go with the perfect uh, NATO, so he takes a hit, but again, it's not the end of the world. So the key, I would say, against uh, Splash Shot is gonna be the same as my first replay, that you gotta be uh, very, very predictive with your Hulk. Because when the when he goes with the Graveyard, you must go with the Hulk. That is gonna force him to not be able to poison. If he poisons the Graveyard and has a tank in front, that's almost all his elixir, he might not have enough for the Hulk. So that is what is the idea here, to try to make sure that we always get that Hulk in. And not give him the, the luxury of uh, doing a full big push with poison, with a tank, with a poison, and then maybe even with a NATO if he has a baby D behind. Right, so that's that's the overall idea of going in against the splash out player. So over here we're basically uh, just waiting for him. So we're gonna cycle. He plays the he plays that, so we're gonna cycle in the back. Uh, we can afford to split archers if he's cycling in the back because we might be able to cycle back to our second set of archers. He goes this time at the bridge, so we're gonna go with the bomb tower predicted. Then he goes with that, so we're gonna go with the archers on this side this time. Then you can see here, the moment he drops that poison, we drop the hog. He goes with he goes with the barrel instead, because the king's activated, but we still get very good hits. Okay, so that, that is always key. When they go in with the graveyard, you must go in with the hog. And if they're going in the lane that you are attacking, just go into the opposite lane. Because you will be able to, to attack both lanes um, later on. So yeah, we can cycle log, we can cycle earthquake if we're full against that tower. Because now we, we have a pretty healthy lead. We have a 1000 HP lead. Of course, one graveyard can change everything. But we must just make sure that we always keep up the pressure. Again, this time he's gonna build up his one big push. So over here, we go with the bomb tower first. I'm not gonna pre-place those archers. This time I go early with the Hulk to force him to defend. He misses that bomb tower, which is so key. He spends the extra NATO, we don't get, so we don't get any shots there. He wanted to play the bomb tower high, so he doesn't want to give me earthquake. So that was the right idea. Now he goes in. This time we play the archers in a different spot. So it's always important, um, don't play your archers in the same spot. So if not, they will just pre-poison pre it, and then it's gonna be much harder. So again, after the poison, we go in with that. He doesn't have anything in Tygo, we go in with the Hawk, we go in with the Earthquake. And that's almost his tower, that's just within Earthquake range. 
Of course, the opponent didn't play like perfectly well, but that, that is the main idea. When when you are playing against such decks, you cannot let them build up big push. If they're gonna go all in, they won't have enough elixir to defend the hawk. So whenever he decides to go with the graveyard poison, you must you must attack the hawk in the opposite lane. The key is also the opposite lane. All right. So I hope you guys like the series. I hope I gave you guys some insight on how to play this hawk earthquake deck. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's gonna help me a lot as a content creator. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.